G'day humans, Chris Stead here. I've just come from the Sony Australia launch event for their new range of TVs for 2025. And in this video, I'm gonna compare and show you the differences between the Bravia 8 that came out in 2024 and the Bravia 8 II, which is coming out in May, 2025. So first off, I'm gonna take you through the presentation so that Sony can talk to you about the differences between the two, like what they're saying, uh, the improvements between the two. Uh, and then I'm going to show you some pretty lengthy side-by-side -side footage at the end. So if you just wanna jump straight to the side-by-side -side footage, uh, then you will uh, just jump to say around the 10 minute mark, roughly, and you will be able to see what the two screens look like side by side. But otherwise, yes, stick around, listen to what Sony's got to tell you about the differences between the monitors, uh, the differences between the OLED tech and the QD OLED tech, which is what we're seeing in the Bravia 2. A uh, little housekeeping to begin with as well, prices. So there's only a 55 inch and a 65 inch of the Bravia 8 II releasing in Australia. So the 55 inch, will cost you $4,499 Australian, and a 65 inch will cost you $5,499. Now, just to give you some scope on that, the Sony Bravia 8, so last year's model, is $3,295 for the 55, so about, what's that, $1,200 cheaper. And the 65 inch is $4,295 here in Australia. So again, about yeah, 1,200 odd, cheaper for the 65 inch. Uh, now there is a 77 inch Bravia 8 that you can get in Australia, but that is not, there is no 77 inch Bravia 8 II that you can get in Australia, at least at launch in May, 2025. Now I've got plenty of other content from this event to show you, the new Bravia 5 announcement, a lot of the new theater bars, so there's plenty more that's gonna go up, so make sure you keep an eye on the channel, subscribe, and you'll be the first to know when they go live. And also make sure you check in the comments. I've got a link to a playlist of all my TV content. I've just come from the LG event. I've got the, same, uh, the Samsung event in a couple of weeks from now. So plenty going up about the 2025 TV range for you to stay on top of. All right, let's jump in and have a listen to the presentation, learn about the differences between the two TVs, and I'm gonna show you exactly what they look like side by side. Let's go. guys are probably most excited about, I'm also very excited about this particular unit, is the Bravia 8 II. Now this comes in two flavors, because we wanted to keep everything QD OLED, 55 and 65 inch. From a design aspect, the feet face directly forward, you can barely see them, and also, if you're not using a soundbar, it can be very close to your TV bench. With this, there are two stand positions. So you have the low set position, and then a high set position to fit a soundbar underneath. And you can see here we've got the Bravia Theta Bar 8 paired with the 8.2. So the 55 and 65 will fit our bar 8 underneath, no issues. And this is essentially the successor of the A95L. Now, we did not have this in the market last year, we only had the Bravia 8. Now we have a range of OLEDs for customers to pick between. This Bravia A95L was a bit of, well, it was the best TV we ever made, really. Like it was just, it was such a good TV. So it is currently in 2025, RT's best OLED that you can buy. It was in 2023, the best TV awarded uh, by a bunch of calibrators on a blind test, uh, by HDTV test. What Hi-Fi has it as five stars. In 2023 and 2024, it won King of TVs by again, movie producers and calibrators doing a blind test in New York, and AV Forum's best in class award as well. Uh, so it's a highly awarded TV, and we really wanted to, to beat that TV. We wanted to give something to the market, say, hey, this is a worthy upgrade. Uh, this is the best, that you, the best OLED that you can buy. So that's how we came up with the Bravia 8 II. It uses the latest generation QD OLED panel, not only that, it's 25% brighter than the brightest 4K OLED that we've ever made. And this particular TV uses all of our color science and processing of the XR processor. So that's what Sony produces and uh, consumers also love. So if you're producing a movie, 
RTVs, particularly Bravia 9, is they actually edit films, edit and grade films on the Bravia 9. Uh, Disney Plus uses our Bravia 9 as a source of truth, as a master monitor when doing their own movies. So that's how highly regarded that XR processor is in the market. So what that looks like on a lineup chart, we've got a traditional white OLED panel on the Bravia 8, and those TVs continue this year. We also now have, for consumers, a secondary choice. So a step up with the Bravia 8 II that allows them to move into QD OLED. That means that the Bravia 8 versus the 8 II, the 8 II is 50% brighter. And again, you will see that it'll be obvious with pretty much every piece of content that we show you, how bright that TV can get. But it's not just about brightness, it's also about color volume. So with that processor, we also have really good shadow detail and color gradation. And again, you will see that shadow detail and dynamic range throughout the demos that we show you with that TV. It might also be important for customers that this is the only QD OLED in the market that has a clear glass screen. So there's no matte filter on our QD OLED. We create all of the sound on the screen of this TV and you don't lose that sound quality that comes through with our acoustic sensing 2.0 technology with our Bravia Theatre by 8 as well. So to showcase both of these, Tim's gonna switch it across to our demo app. Quickly touch on sound. There are more powerful actuators to produce sound on the screen with the Bravia 8 II, but also the Bravia 8 II has a left and right subwoofer, whilst the Bravia 8 just has a single center channel sub. That's right. My fat fingers hit two buttons at once. <laughs> so we've got a bit of a demo from one of our new Sony pictures that is uh, going to be releasing quite soon. We might unmute that one so we can play some sound through there. This is Karate Kid Legends. You knew Mr. Miyagi? I did not come looking for Sensei Miyagi. I came looking for you. In life, you have only one question. Is it worth fighting for it? Or not? Lee means to me what you meant to Sensei Miyagi. I'm doing this for all of us, but whatever it takes. Two branches. One tree. content and other new movies that are coming out of Sony Pictures Core, uh, well Sony Pictures and Columbia will be available on Sony Pictures Core, which we'll run into in a second. But before I run through Sony Pictures Core, I wanted to compare and contrast both these units, the Bravia 8 and the Bravia 8 II. For a lot of consumers, they will see both side by side in the most popular stores in Australia, and they will be able to do what you're doing, which is seeing both and deciding which one is, is worth their time and money. So what you're essentially seeing here is this is a white OLED technology, so there is a white subpixel plus the red, green, and blue subpixels. With the QD OLED technology, 
it is a primary red, green, and blue, and that's all you get. You don't need a white subpixel. The benefit there is when you need to be bright in certain areas, you don't need to turn on that white subpixel because there is none. Uh, so when you're having a look at a lot of bright things that aren't white, those neon signs, you're going to get a lot more color volume coming through, a lot more brightness, a lot more color that's true to life, a lot more color accuracy uh, with the QD OLED. So again, these are exactly the same demos that we're showing with the mini LEDs. Uh, just so you can compare and contrast as well, uh, but yeah, it's, it's a huge difference between the units. With colour, it's much the same story. So, we saw the comparison of skin tones before, uh, you can see that same difference here. And again, I'll fast forward it so we can go through some of the the other scenes a bit quicker. A total volume, total volume of colour and brightness is much improved. 